Okay, I need that cutting board. We try to treat this as they're kind of a home away from home. A lot of people have summer homes or guest homes they go to, and we like to think of ourselves as one of their guest homes where we're here to help them be comfortable and to give them some instructions about how to get around the community. And uh, then, of course, we try to make them comfortable here with our facilities and our breakfast. Send them off with a good breakfast every morning. To help with the math, Ann uses this table. It shows her leap age and actual age next to the years she's been alive. I was five and a half when I married. And then in 50, Dan was born two years later in 1956. I was six then. So in Cindy there, she was born in 1964, and that made me eight. <laughs> it was, it was plump funny. <laughs> it was, uh, my husband's birthday was coming up, and I always liked to make him a handmade birthday card. And so I had this photograph that I'd taken of him wearing a bathrobe in the woods. And I wanted to do something funny with it, so I replaced his head with our boxer's head. And it just, it just looked kind of funny. And, and I, I look better with a dog head than a human head. I just get a rhythm and I just, I just start going, trying to make it a, as beautiful for the crowd as I can. You have the opportunity to paint the sky. And rarely in your life do you have the ability to you just you paint the skies. What you do, you just get a rhythm in your head, and you just send up these uh, you send up these shells and watch them burst, and send up another one, and and you're painting the sky. It's a, it's it's one of the best jobs in the world. Love it. When I encountered these first tigers, uh, they had spent most of their life in the back of a Volkswagen van. Uh, the male was blind and crippled, and most of his teeth were rotted out. The female was just hungry and bored. Uh, I encountered these tigers. I was outraged by the situation. I complained. Uh, ultimately, I ended up with the tigers uh, and came here in 1991 with, with those two tigers and a leopard, uh, looking for a place with no neighbors I could start this. And here we are almost 22 years later. I'm just an old man that likes to tinker with pieces of wood. <laughs> I enjoy it and uh, it gives me some enjoyment and I wouldn't call myself an artist. There's a lot of people around a lot more talented with drawing and things that I am. After the grinding and a quick reheating, it was ready for Ed's initials. Now we got the seal of approval on there. Letterpress is the old fashioned way of making posters or cards using individual letters. It's time consuming, but has a unique style. Over the past 10 years, letterpress has become uh, very popular. It's used, the effect is used in ads and in um, you know, TV and, and so on all over. Don't let the shoes and hair fool you. These dancers are actually men. I think people tend to think of ballet as very pompous and arrogant and for a certain crowd, and we wanted to let people know that ballet can be for everyone, and you don't have to uh, know a lot about opera or ballet to really enjoy going to the theater and seeing a dance performance. <laughs> It never felt right to be like a one-man band because I'm not a band, you know. I mean, I, I play a lot of different things, but it's mostly I'm, I'm a, you know, maybe one-man percussion ensemble or something, you know. Uh, but uh, one-man band, 
didn't didn't really sound uh, necessary to me. D didn't sound uh, accurate. The largest animal native to the central Illinois area has to be the giant pink elephant. What's his name? He has a name, right? Pinky. <laughs> Pretty simple. It's um, not as much as therapy. And then I would say, well, it's no more than therapy. And now I say, well, it's not much more than therapy. <laughs> so, you know, does that sound like an addiction? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. so. I'm going after you. Go. That's for you, Mom. That's for my mother. Staying up is the other big thing because it's very easy to hit somebody and then just kind of keep going. So being able to hit with control, I think, is a pretty tough skill. But once women get it, it's a really cool thing to see. You're using this? Yeah. To hit into the person, OK? <laughs> OK, let's take it easy here. I'll be easy, OK? okay. <laughs> All right, let's do it. OK, this is like, oh, I did, I did feel that. That was good. Uh, I like the laughter. Uh, I like the, uh, the response of people saying, you did a good job, you know. Uh, I, 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 I just like making people laugh. I've always had fun with my crippleness. For example, I love walking in dance clubs. Well, I find the most gorgeous woman on the dance floor. I go right up to her and say, hey, have you ever danced with a handicapped person? <laughs> when she says no, I say, me neither, and I walk away. <laughs> I think they picture uh, Frankenstein movies, so that's one reason why I'm going to be playing Frankenstein at, at this concert is because of that. When we moved here in 1963, we just knew it was special, but we're not this special. <laughs> I worked for the Postal Service and the post office was right there by the outhouse. And every day that I'd come in, it'd always be cars there taking pictures. And you see a big sign outside that says historical two-story outhouse. That draws people's attention. It's like, wait a minute, two-story outhouse. And they're pulling in here. So, and, you know, you get the buses, you get the limos, you just get the tourists. They're just curious about how in the world does a two-story outhouse even work? Well, the short answer is gravity. But the long answer is a town secret. Do not adjust your television. This is a white squirrel. What? The what? <laughs> I'm serious. And they dwell in Olney, Illinois. You know, you've always heard stories that, you know, we were the only town, and I used to hear when I was younger that if you would take them outside of town, they would just die. And that's not necessarily true. I found out in older years. Good morning, Mr. Knight. Good morning. Hello. Hello. No response. So I named him Silent Knight. And I named him nighty night. He's got a diaper on so he doesn't rust. <laughs> In hindsight, I could have, I could have lived with a, a house like the neighbors have, but I don't know. It was back here secluded in the woods. Nobody was going to find out about it. It was going to be a secret originally, but the secret got out and, and now the news crew is coming out and doing stories and everything. No one's ever going to leave you alone now. <laughs>